Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Would you, would somebody just shoot me a yes or no if you can hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, cool. Um, okay, so as I was saying, you probably couldn't hear me because my microphone was messed up, but as I was saying, um, today we're going to be doing, I'm going to show you how to do a faux finish with um, chalk paste from Redesign with Prima. Maybe a few other fun products if we uh, have the time, but um, you can do this process or technique. It's super fun, it's easy, and you can do it on walls. I've d this, that's how I did my brick wall, my faux brick wall back there. I just used paint instead of chalk paste and some other products. But the technique is the same. So um, we're going to be doing faux finish, and you can use any colors of chalk paste that you want to create whatever look that you want. Um, hey, everybody. Oh, my gosh. You'll have to take a video of that, Marshall. And there's uh, Chris Donna. Hey, girl. Hey. So, um, so with this technique, you can use any colors that you want. Okay, I'm going to be using fairly neutral colors because the look that I'm creating is sort of like a faux, old world, um, maybe old aging concrete sort of look and that's what I'm going for but you can use whatever colors you want and you can even use paint I like to use the chalk paste because it adds layers of depth it's it's thicker than paint it's it's sort of like a chalk paint um, pudding you know what I'm saying it's like chalk paint pudding um, it's super creamy and super thick and it smells like roses it really does it smells like roses so that's just one color this is English country and some things that you can do with chalk paste are, besides, uh, you can do, besides the faux um, finish look that we're doing today, you can do um, raised stenciling. You can even paint with it for like a nice dimensional, you know, uh, scene or flower or whatever. Um, I've used it on clothing, um, tote bags, apparel. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of different uses for chalk paste, but I'd say the number one the main use is probably raised stenciling. And uh, we're not doing the raised stenciling today, but we're doing the faux finish. So all you need is some chalk paste in a few different colors. Um, I grabbed my wood block here, my distressing block. It's a fancy little jobby that I got at um, the craft store for $4 before my coupon. After my coupon, it was probably like $2.50. You can also cut off a chunk of a two by four piece of wood or you can grab a squeegee, or a spatula, or a trowel, um, 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 maybe a big palette knife if that's what you have. Anything that we can use to scrape our chalk paste on kind of randomly. So I, I like my wooden block because it's got the handle. But like I said, if you don't have anything like this or a craft store around, just grab a 2 by 4 and cut off a little square of it. That works just fine. So, all right, so I've got a few different colors of chalk paste. And I've got a few other things here in front of me in case we get the time to do those too. But for now, we're going to focus on the chalk paste look. Hey, everyone. Um, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so I'm done blabbing. And I'm going to point you down here at my, um, my project. So you can do this, like I said, on walls. If you missed it earlier, see my faux brick wall back there? This is exactly how I did the faux brick wall, except I used paint and um, some other products to get the texture instead of chalk paste. But I could have very well used chalk paste. Um, but, but it's the same technique. So I'm doing this on a just wood panel today. Uh, you can do it on a wall on a dresser, on a buffet, you can do it on a canvas, uh, whatever you can really kind of think of that you want to put a faux finish on. So it's not um, strictly for this. I'm just showing you because I don't really have a piece of furniture that I'm doing this on <coughs> currently, so it's just easier to show you on a wood board. So all I've done so far is lay a base coat of, this is French linen. You can pick, like I said, any color that you want, um, you can use different shades of black, you can use all bright and bold colors, you can use all neutrals, which is kind of what I'm doing. I'm using all neutrals and then I'm throwing in a couple of 
couple extras here and there. Um, and then, let's see. Yeah, so any colors that you want, you pick. I am using neutrals for the most part, except for these little, uh, I've got like a pale green and a pale blue, which is lark green and buxton blue. And um, what the green and the blue do, if you just get a pale green and blue, that adds kind of a patina look almost, like a hint of oxid oxidation, oxidization, oxidization, whatever. It adds a hint of uh, rustiness, not rustiness, oxidation. Is it oxidation or oxidization? I don't know, but you know what I'm saying. So let's start. So I got my little uh, blocky block here. <coughs> and let me grab a palette knife real quick because I did not grab one of those. Uh, there we go. Actually, not this one. I don't like this one. What about this one is my favorite. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with my, oh, let's start with English country because that's right in front of me. So English country, like I said, um, this uh, chalk paste is like a thick, thick, thick chalk paint pudding almost. Okay, it's like the consistency of pudding. I'd say paste, but to me, paste is a little more gritty. This is very smooth and creamy, very thick. Um, so I'm going to start with this color in my wood block. Now, this technique is all about layering, okay? So the first couple colors that I do, you're going to be like, wow, that's stupid. What is she doing? That's ugly. But the more layers you add, the more natural and um, the, more you can, the more natural it looks and the more you can start to see where I'm, where I'm going with this. Okay, so I'm, I got a palette knife. I'm just going to scoop out a little bit of my chalk paste and put some on my block here. Not too much. Not too much. That may be too much. Do doesn't really matter. You can put a lot or a little. The point is you got it on your block. Or, or trowel or squeegee or whatever you're deciding to use. I'm just going to start wherever I feel like it, no rhyme or reason, and I'm going to drag my block across my board, okay, kind of randomly. I don't want it to look too patterny, okay? I don't want to look too pattern-like. Can you guys see very well? I'm hoping that you can see. I, I lost my, I left my regular tripod at home, and I've got this kind of janky mm -hmm. one, so I'm hoping that you can see okay with the janky tripod. Are we okay? All right. If you happen to be at the retail, perfect. If you happen to be at the Dixie Bell Retailer Conference, which I'm doubting most of you were, but if you happen to be there, we did this technique in my class. And I think the general consensus from what I heard was that most people found it pretty fun. I think it's fun and stress, stress relieving. So um, I love to learn and do different things um, paint techniques and product techniques with products and things like that. Like that's what keeps it interesting for me is learning and doing and trying new things instead of just plain old painting. But, <clears throat> um, not only that, I like to do ones where I'm having a, I'm having fun, you know, and relieving some stress. And this is definitely one of those projects. And it really requires very little skill. Okay. I'm going to just, I'm going to be honest here. You don't have to have any talent to do this, okay? You just got to have um, some wood, some chalk paste, and some eyeballs, and hands preferably. Okay, we're going to switch on to gravel, um, which is oh, like a light gray. It's very similar to my base coat color, slightly lighter. If you're just hopping on, um, we did a base coat, or I already had my base coat done in this kind of grayish, grayish, French linen is what it is. And now we're taking our chalk paste and we're scraping them on. Um, we're gonna add layers and layers to create a faux, faux finishy type look, okay? And I'm using all neutrals. As I said earlier, use whatever color, whatever colors your little heart desires. Who knows, you maybe you'll come up with something um, mind blowing that we all never have seen before, okay? Okay, so we're taking our um, gravel color, and we're just going to do the same thing. I'm going to try to keep this, <clears throat> excuse me, random looking. Like, you don't want it to be too pattern-y, you know what I'm saying? So, so you don't want to go over the entire board equally or, you know, exactly the same, because that, 
that makes it too symmetrical. You want to make sure that it's um, random. So as you can see, I'm doing a little more uh, chalk paste heavy in this corner and then a little less down here. And what that does in, in terms of a piece of art or something like that or compositionally, what it does if you don't do it evenly all over and you do just a little bit heavier in one corner or one side or whatever, that is creating um, a focal point, okay? So if I have this all one pattern that looks all the same, your eye doesn't know where to look. It's kind of crazy, right? And uh, what you need, what, what I think about on every single piece of furniture, piece of art that I create, I think, what is my focal point? Like, yes, I like a lot to be going on on my pieces, but um, a lot of that on my pieces is background noise. Do you know what I'm saying? It's background noise and you need to have a focal point. So I try to think about that, um, everything that I create. <clears throat> uh, and we're going to move on to... Let's move on to Buxton Blue. We'll do the blue and the green next so I can show you what I mean about the oxidization that they add, Oxid the oxidized look that they um, lend to the piece. So got Buxton Blue. I don't know where they come up with these names, you guys. I don't make them up, okay? Certainly not, but look at that blue. Isn't that pretty? Hi, everyone. Hello, Llewellyn. Good morning. It's not really morning here, but you're either a late riser or on a different time zone. A little bit of blue. Okay, so we got a little bit of Buxton blue. Oh, I love the consistency of this stuff. It's so yummy. Don't eat it, but it is yummy. All right, so we're going to do the same thing with the Buxton blue. And um, I'm not using a whole lot of pressure, okay? I'm literally kind of just holding it on top and dragging it along. I'm not pressing... Um, I'm, I'm not pressing too hard because then you just squash everything and um, I'm just kind of dragging it with very little pressure, just enough to kind of hold it to the surface of my board. Okay, so do you see how that little bit of blue is kind of starting to create like a um, oxidized look? Because a lot of times in, in rusty old things, you'll see a little bit, little bits of green and blue. I mean, you'll see little bits of all kinds of color, but the green and the blue are very indicative of rust, so or rusting about to happen. So that is why I'm adding in the little bit of green and blue. You don't have to, like I said, substitute any color your little heart desires. And let's see this. Which one was this called? Lark green. Again, I don't know where they come up with these names, but who cares? The color is beautiful, right? So here's our lark green. Same thing. Uh, where's my block? My block, my block, my block. Put a little bit of lark green on the lark green on the block. And mm, let's take away a little bit. Okay. And then same old thing. We're just gonna uh, drag it on. Spread it out just a bit. Okay, so when I did my um, faux brick wall for my staging area that I showed you a little bit ago, this is what I did with several paint colors, except instead of the chalk paste, I used, okay, instead of the chalk paste, I used paint, and on top of my base coat, so before I did any of this scraping with the, the wood, um, I did, I took the brick stencil, the redesigned with Prima brick stencil, which is now discontinued. So um, it's getting a little hard to find, but if you have one or you can locate one or pick a different brick stencil, um, I used that and I had a, um, some paint with a, here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So while I'm talking about it, you can see it. Okay, so see my brick wall back there? Same process, okay? Um, I painted my base coat, I took my brick stencil, and I mixed my paint with sea spray, which is a texture additive. Um, you can also use like spackle or Dixie mud or um, from Redesign with Prima, you can use their 3D stencil fiber paste, which is probably what I would have used if I would have had enough of it at the time. Um, but in order to go over the whole wall, I needed something that I could mix up in big batches. So I used the sea spray. But um, anyway, so I did random places on my wall with the brick stencil and the sea spray, which you could use the 3D stencil fiber paste or chalk paste. Okay, let that dry. 
then I did this process right here that we're doing. Okay, we, I did exactly this, just with all grays, um, over the whole wall, okay? And then I let it dry, and when I went to seal it, I tinted my sealer with a little bit of really dark um, brown. It's called coffee bean. So I tinted my sealer, and that gave it that whole, you know, kind of washed, washed over. Um, Mary, it marries all the colors really well um, and makes them a little less contrasty. So if you're looking to do a faux finish like that, just know that you can, you can do this method to get there. Just maybe a few little things different, like throwing a stencil or whatever here and there. I'm going to go ahead and dry this. It's going to take, uh, it's not going to take too long, but it's going to um, be a little bit loud, so I apologize. But it'll dry pretty quickly. We just need it to be a little dry. It doesn't have to be thoroughly dry in order to move on to our next colors. Because if we keep layering them, they'll start to mix together like they're kind of starting to do here. And we don't want them to mix together. Otherwise, we would just take brown and do brown over the whole thing, right? Okay, so I'm going to dry these real quick, or this real quick. I hope everybody's having a great day. I've had a pretty stressful last couple days, so I wouldn't call them great, but I hope you're all doing a little better than I am mentally. Just one of those days, you know what I'm saying? But getting to do this kind of thing makes me happy, so that's good. That's all we can do, right? When we're in a bad place mentally is just try to make ourselves happy and do what we know is going to put us in a good mood and try to get through it you know oh while I'm drying this real quick is there any questions I can answer any questions real quick and try not to burn my chalk paste at the same time um, I don't see any questions but hello and thank you for watching hopefully you will learn some something new or different that you have not tr yet tried and it's pretty fun I'm having fun with this for real okay so is it dry yet okay this is dry enough ah don't burn yourself god dang don't burn yourself I do that way too many times on camera I don't do it in real life quite as often as I do on camera okay so it's dry to the touch dry enough we're gonna move on so I'm going to grab my other color other colors, I have a couple more colors here to go, and um, we're going to do sand. Let's see, we have sand. Wait a minute. Okay, so we have sand left, and then I brought, just in case we had time, which it looks like we're going to probably have time, I brought icing paste over, um, which is the same kind of product. Um, yes, I'm right. We all have those days and I feel like mine are kind of happening too often this past month or so, but we'll just blame the coronavirus like we do. Blame it for everything else. Um, I brought over the icing paste just in case we have time. And icing paste is basically the same as chalk paste except it's metallic and it dries to uh, like a glossy or semi-glossy, a glossier finish. So the chalk paste dries matte but this dries glossy and it's in metallic so I brought gold over and if we have time we're gonna go over this with some gold either icing paste or uh, we gr we're gonna try something that I have not tried before okay so I have tried it before but not with decor wax we're gonna try and see if we can scrape on some eternal and add some bling bling to our faux finish now I'm just gonna go ahead and give you a disclaimer if that doesn't work out um, it might not work out, I don't know, but in theory, mm -hmm. it's just going to do the same thing and add some gold to our, to our piece here. So, you might be witnessing some history. Here we go. We're going to use sand. Ah, if I can get it open. Ah! 
I'm sorry, I'm clumsy today, you guys. I'm so sorry. All right, so sand is like this sandy color. And see how I got a little bit on my board? Whoops. I'm just going to take my block and scrape that in and make it work. Make it work, designers. Make it work. All right, a little bit of sand. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to come in down here. This corner is feeling a little bit lonely. So see how I didn't go over my whole board? I kind of kept it down here, um, you know, to keep it from not looking too patterny. Um, patterny is a real word, I promise. It means to not look like too much of a pattern. Patterny. It's an adjective. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and take one more color, which is um, I'm going to take some, <clears throat> excuse me, some... Um, Gravel, which is a color we already used, this gray, and I want to go over this area just a little bit more um, to break up some of this um, chunk of the sand that we did. So that's going to be, wait, did we use gravel yet? Yeah, we used gravel. Okay. Thought we did. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of gravel, not a whole lot, I don't want a whole lot, and just kind of go over this area. Break it up just a, just a tad. There we go. All right, now we're good. Okay, cool. Now, this does it for our chalk paste portion. Um, you can keep going if you want. Like if you, <clears throat> if you want to keep adding layers and layers and layers of the chalk paste, go for it. it. It only starts to look cooler and cooler and cooler. You know, like that's what will happen. Um, for the sake of time, I'm gonna stop with the chalk paste right now. But you can keep going, you know, on your project and you just add to the awesomeness of your project with more layers. But I do want to go ahead and, okay, I'm going to take one more second and dry this to the touch a little bit. So I apologize about the noise again and I hope I don't burn myself again. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and dry this real quick um, so that, <clears throat> so we can try our uh, experiment with the element. Won't that be cool? We'll be awesome. I I hope so. I hope it'll be awesome. I'm pretty sure it will be. So just bear with me for one second. I'm going to dry this real quick. Um, <clears throat> okay, so no, the block, uh, yeah, the block is actually uh, just a distressing block is what it's called, and I got it at the craft store um, for a couple dollars. It has this handle on it, which makes it pretty convenient, but if you have a, a scrap wood laying around, you can cut a little block of four by four inch roughly scrap wood, or if you have a two by four laying around, just, just cut a little chunk off of a two by four, um, two by four plank of wood. Or you can use a squeegee or a palette knife or a credit card or a um, <clears throat> trowel. If you have, you know, one of those little trowel jobbies that they use to put, you know, in masonry. Um, I have one, but it's really big, so it would make more sense to use on the wall, but they make different sizes. Um, you can use the bottom of your shoe if you really wanted to. You can use all kinds of, anything flat, really, you can use. Shoot, you know what? If I really wanted to and I was um, in a pinch, I would just use the top of my chalk paste and uh, use that to scrape on. Because it's flat, you can just scrape on with the chalk paste with this. That's if you're like super efficient and you have nothing else laying around. It would work perfectly actually. Okay, so let's see. Okay, that's dryish. We're gonna leave it at that. Okay, we're gonna try. First, I'm gonna try um, with the uh, icing paste in one corner to show you what that looks like. And then we're gonna move on and try the decor wax in one corner to see what that comes out like. And wish me luck. So. I have done a lot of raised stenciling with the chalk, uh, the icing paste, and it's very similar to the chalk paste in that you can use it for raised stenciling. I've used it on jeans. Uh, what else have I used it on? And furniture, obviously. I've used it on all kinds of different things. Canvas. It's really fun. But um, 
I'd say also its main use is, is raised stenciling. So we're, but we're going to try it on this faux finishy type, type deal and see how that works out. So I got my block. And I'm just going to load up a little bit of icing paste on my block. And let's spread that out a little bit. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and shoot for this bottom corner here and see how that... Ooh, 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 guys. This is so pretty. Oh, okay, that's it. i got to find a project to do this on. Oh, my God. Why haven't I done this before? I'm dying. I'm dying. I love it when a plan goes well. All right, let me lift this up and show it to you <clears throat> with the icing paste because it's kind of bomb and I dig it. Mm. Let's see. Can you see the shimmer? Is the shimmer showing? Is the shimmer showing? That's kind of bomb, right? Look at it. Woo! So pretty. It's so, so pretty. Isn't it beautiful? Oh my gosh, I'm like so impressed with the icing paste. I wasn't sure if it was going to spread out too thin to where it was going to be transparent, in which case I would have just done another um, layer of it to kind of make it a little thicker and more opaque, but this worked out swimmingly. So, okay, so that's with the icing paste. I'm going to do up in this corner, I'm going to try it with the decor wax. And let's, let's hope it turns out just as equally impressive as the icing paste. <clears throat> We're about to find out. All right. All right, so decor wax I've got in Eternal, which is gold, one of my favorite products on the face of the planet. Boom. Um, and normally when I put it on, it's this very opaque, pretty shimmery gold. So we're going to try how we're going to try to see how it comes out on with our block. Now, this is not quite as economical of a way to get gold on your piece as the icing paste. But we're doing this for the sake of science, okay? So um, we're going to use a little bit less because a lot of decor wax, a little bit of decor wax goes a long way. So we're going to use quite, we're going to use quite a bit less to start with and see how that does us. So that's about all I'm starting with, okay? And we're just going to go ahead and start in this other corner. I want to keep them separate so you can see the difference. And lightly scrape that on. Okay, okay. It's definitely a different kind of gold. It's more of a, um, oh, I don't want to say greenish gold, but I guess it is kind of greenish compared to the other one, right? All right, I'm going to add a little bit more up in this corner right here. A little bit more. That's pretty, too. It's just a different gold, different type of gold. Mm -mm. Okay, and then I'll hold this up too so you can get a good, a better look at it um, as well. Ooh, I like, me likey. So it just depends on if you're going for like a more vintage gold or a more brassy kind of gold um, and your budget as well. The icing, icing paste is a little easier on the old wallet than the decor wax, but... But then again, the decor wax goes a long way, so I guess it kind of evens out. All right, so let me point you up to show you a better close-up view of the decor. So that's the decor wax gold that we scraped on right there up in the top. Well, it would be your left. And see how just random and kind of aged it looks? And then we've got our um, icing paste in this bottom corner, which is... Like I said, a little bit more vintage gold as opposed to the brassier gold. Um, but anyways, you could keep going to your little heart's content on a piece like this or your wall or whatever you're doing this on. Or you can stop now. I'm going to stop now. Um, but use whatever colors you want. Maybe you'll come up with something really amazing and you'll have to show us all because we've never seen anything like it before, you know? It doesn't matter how much you do this method, you're never going to get the same results twice. So even if I wanted to recreate this, I could use the same colors and the same products, but I'm not going to get the exact same look, no matter how hard I try. It'll be close, but it wouldn't be exactly the same um, because of how random, you know, the, the technique 
It just creates randomness. So um, anyways, I hope that you all try this on something. If anything, at least just a scrap of wood or a canvas or something to kind of um, just see how fun it is because it's a lot of fun. Um, but that's all I got for today. So uh, thank you for tuning in uh, with me and hanging out. And I will see you next Thursday at noon. And we'll do some more fun, fun techniques with uh, Redesign with Primo products, okay? So you all have a good week. Thanks. Bye.